This is Cut to the Chase Podcast. I am your host. Oh, man, I hated my voice there. I am your host. See, that's not even me, man. It's not even me. What am I doing, man? Let's start over. This is Cut to the Chase. Already, already got the gun. Already got the gun. Beginning of the week, already got the gun. I'm not sharp. I'm not sharp. Let me take a sip of my tea. Let me get a sip of my tea. Let me make sure I'm back on track. Don't like the tea. Don't even like the tea either. Wow, this is gonna be a. This is this episode's gonna. I, I'm interested to see where this is gonna go. This is Cut to the Chase Podcast. I am your host, Chase Abel. Yes, that is me, Mr. Abel, Mr. A.K.A. Coco Caliente, A.K.A. Coco Panda, A.K.A. whatever you want me to be. How about that? I am here with another episode of uh, the Cut to the Chase Podcast. Again, thank you guys for listening. Been getting a lot of good reviews, a lot of good shares. Appreciate it, guys. Keep keep it coming. Keep it coming. Uh, rate, download, subscribe to the podcast. You know, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell, you know, tell whoever wants to listen to me talk about nothing. How about that? Just, t- just, just when you promote my podcast, just go to somebody and just say, Hey, do you want, do you ever, do you want to listen to something that's really good that talks about nothing? That's my marketing pitch for you guys. And, uh, just go ahead and do that. <laughs> Anyways, hope you guys get getting uh, off to a good start of your week. I hope you guys are. I did. Um, it is my birthday week. Actually, it's my birthday week. My birthday is coming up in a few days. And I don't know, man. I feel the same way that I did last year, just just skinnier. If that makes sense. Like down down a few LBs. I'm sure a lot of you guys probably know because I always post my, you know, validation post every time on Instagram when I when I work out. But sixty pounds a little sixty pounds lighter than last year. So, you know, got a few more to go, got a few more LBs, but feeling good very blessed to have another birthday i really like birthdays i celebrate birthdays i celebrate other people's birthdays i'm that dude so if you have a birthday coming up uh, make sure you let me know and i'll sh- I'll give you a holler i won't be able to give you anything because i'm broke but i'll give you a lot of love and that's all that matters i redeemed myself I redeem myself. I'm back on track, baby. Here we go. No, my birthday's coming up, so I don't know. I'm thinking about doing something on my birthday. I'm going to have a little shindig. I want to do a little 90s party, 90s vibe party. I'm going to throw a little get-together. Nothing too crazy. It's going to be at my friend's house. She's a DJ, so that's going to be a plan. That's going to be cool. We're going to play all the jams. She's going to play all the jams. And um, I'll you know I'll post some stuff about it and uh, you know share some, share some stories on my Instagram. Um, yeah, so... Low key, I was supposed to go to Miami, Florida. Damn, that was really what I wanted to do. It just didn't work out, and I, we talked about that uh, on another episode, previous episode, I believe. But uh, yeah, Miami fell through. But hey, it's all good. I'll I'll be back down in Miami very very soon. Um, so you got to be patient sometimes, and you just have to wait. So um, I'll probably start a GoFundMe. I'm just. I mean, I'm just going to keep it 100. Just, I'm going to probably start a GoFundMe for my birthday. Listen, but before you start rolling your eyes and all this shit, let me tell you how I'm going to do it before you judge me. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start a GoFundMe page. I have almost about 2000 Instagram followers. Okay. I really appreciate everyone who follows me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start a GoFundMe page for my birthday and all you have to contribute is a dollar you know what i'm saying that's it that's all i want it's a buck now times that by a few people times that by a few more people adds up to yeah yeah it adds up to yeah basically what i'm my basically what i'm trying to hit i'm trying to hit about 500 bucks so i can go to strip club in providence basically that's all you know so if you guys can make that happen just 
That's all I'm asking is like a couple bucks. I'm not even asking for $10 or $20. Hey, if you're going to do that, please do. I'm not going to say no. You could throw a little George Washington in there. No, nah, George Washington is a dollar. Who's the $20 guy? Andrew Jackson. Is that what it is? Yeah. By the way, what happened to Harriet Tubman? Well, I, you know, we got to get into that too a little later when I bring my Nikki neighbors. What happened to Harriet Tubman? I thought, I don't know. I don't know, man. America, I don't know. America doesn't seem to always come through sometimes. I don't know. I don't know why I blamed it on our, I don't know why I blamed it on America. That was weird. <laughs> Going back to my uh, GoFundMe page for my, for my birthday, it'll be up probably tomorrow or Wednesday. And um, you guys can throw a little, throw a little love there. <laughs> Daddy wants to get a birthday suit. How about that? He wants to go out and buy a nice birthday suit. And uh, down Providence Strip Club. That's what I want to do. I'm lying. I don't want to go to strip club. Actually, I do. I really want to go to strip club. I haven't been to a strip club in a long time. I used to go to strip clubs a lot. When I mean a lot, a lot. I was that dude that would go to a strip club on a Sunday during the day shift. I was that guy. I was a day shift strip club dude because they would get free food. You get chicken and you get some good food there. It's free. Strip club food, if you go to a good strip club place, they give, they have some pretty good food top end chef because you know if the food's not good at strip club then people are not gonna spend any money so you can't have like bad food at a strip club so and i went to an italian owned strip club you know they're coming with it you know they're coming with the cacciatores and the prosciuttos and the shishutos and the judos and all that you know i'm like i'm also on the holiday party list uh the christmas holiday parts for the strip club so i get emails for that We'll talk about that too. I know I'm throwing a lot at you guys. This is this podcast is going way off the rails already, but you know what? It's my birthday week and I don't care. Had a great weekend. Had a good weekend. No, I'll say I had a great weekend. Very interesting weekend. Um, did some comedy. Uh, that was good. That's always good to do some comedy. Uh, we'll definitely we'll talk about uh, the experience I had with that. <laughs> Um, my Celtics won, which is great. They beat the Brooklyn Nets yesterday. You know, I'm going to start talking a little bit more sports because I am a sports guy, sports person. I can't say guy. I got to be equal. I'm a sports person. Um, my Boston Celtics won. They beat the Brooklyn Nets. So that was always good. Great game. Um, the Boston Garden, the Garden was really, really live, um, and happening yesterday. So, um, I didn't go to the game. I'm just telling you like what I saw through the TV because the tickets are expensive. So that's why I need to go fund me page. So I can buy more tickets. So you see where I'm going with this guys. Just give me your fucking money. No, donate your money. Cause I don't, yeah. let me take a sip of the shitty tea again. This is getting, this is getting ridiculous. Didn't come prepared. It's all good though. We're going to fight this through. Um, so I hope you guys, again, like I said, you guys are off to a great week. Hope you guys had a good weekend. Um, and, um, you know, some, this is just another, 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 I can't believe it's almost springtime. You know, we're in the middle of March. This year is already going by fast. This is crazy. As I'm getting older, man, time is just going by really fast, man. That's what I'm, this is, it's getting a little scary. I got to slow things down a little bit. I got to slow things down a little bit. Um, over the weekend, I actually went to, uh, Worcester, Massachusetts. I did a show, did a comedy show. Um, I brought, uh, Mr. Nikki neighborhoods, Nikki neighborhood stepped out. <laughs> Nikki neighborhood stepped out and did some comedy in front of people. Mr. Fucking clean. Mr. Fucking goddamn hide and mighty. Yeah. Guy always wants to stick in his house. You know, I get it. He's a, he's a married man. He's got a lot of important things to do. You know, he's 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 very very um he has a, he brings a lot of value to a lot of things. You know, so a lot of people pull him in other areas. You know, he has a lot of options. Nikki Nikki has options. He's a he's an options guy. You know, you'll never ever um, if you ask Nikki to do something, he'll probably he'll more than likely say he has something to do. And uh, I hate him for that. Fucking hate him for that. 
That's what that's a, I think that's where I want to get to in my life. I just want to get to a point where every time a person asks me to go somewhere, I'll just say no because I'll tell them I have something to do. And I just want to but the thing that I'm mentioning that I have something to do is cooler than what they're offering. It can't be less cool than what they're offering because it, at that point, you know, you're just being an asshole. <laughs> If you're going to say no to someone who's who's inviting you somewhere, make sure the thing that you're doing is way cooler than their thing that they're offering you to go with them. You got to flex. You got to <laughs> because if I was like, hey, you want to go, you just go do some comedy, right? You're going to be on stage. You're going to have fun. It's free drinks, free food. Everything's rolled out for you. Just come and just do the show. And if you tell me, no, I need to go, you know, I need to go fold laundry. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know what Nikki thinks about that, but... Um, well, God. listen, listen. Oh, I worked good. really hard to get to the point in my life where I can tell people no. <clears throat> that's my... Wow. Yeah. That's my flex, is that I don't have to do things that... No, no, no. The comedy thing, mm -hmm. when you get me on a show or you invite me to do a show, it got to the point where I was, I was, I was like, no, I have to do this and I have to do that, and I kind of more recently been like, well, what the f what? Right. Go. You have to go. Yeah, you gotta go. You gotta go. And um, I had a man. I was already stressed out that day because you know. Um, that was a stressful day for you. A stressful day, man, because you know it started from deciding how I'm gonna get up there, right? <laughs> yeah. I said, am I gonna take the train up there? You know, am I gonna you know rent a car up there? Um, at first, I told you we're gonna you know I'm gonna get a car, I'll pick you up, and we'll go up there. And then what happened was I decided like, hey, I may stay up there a little longer. late, a little longer. I'm gonna pause here, if I may. This is where you and I differ. This is where it is, though, because mm -hmm. I'm thinking I'm going to go in like the fucking Marines, do what I have to do, have some fish tacos mm -hmm. and then go and then leave. But I don't want to cramp your style. That's the thing. Right. I'm a guest. I'm a yeah. guest. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the plus one of Chase. Yes. It has a good ring to it. That's the next podcast you do. Chase plus one. Chase plus one. Um, mm -hmm. So that's all. The, that's where it comes from. I approach it in a way where like I need to go in, put my hours in and then get out and then dip and then dip gotcha it's not a lack of interest that's for sure right i yeah no i get it i get it but that was a fun night started off stressful was fun yeah the oh. car the car situation was a pain in the i mean let's car, let's dive into the zip car situation fucking zip car i swear to god zip car hey i'm not shitting on you i'll i'll definitely sponsor you but in order for me to you gotta you, we, there's some honesty that needs to happen here I made a reservation for Zipcar. For people who don't know what Zipcar is, it's a it's a service that you can rent a car by hour. Um, you know, usually they're in like you know the Northeast. I don't know if they're in other areas, but whatever. You can rent cars by the hour, and they're all in you know locations nearby wherever you are. And then you just go pick it up, and then you drop it back at the location. Simple. I've been using them for a while. I like them. Lately, they've been really acting really bad lately. Awesome. Customer service. Their customer service, man. No, the customer service is good, but this is my thing. I made a reservation for a car. I went to go to the location to go get the car. The car wasn't there. Not their fault. I understand. However, I need to get somewhere. I need to get to a show. I need to get a car. So usually what they do is they find another car real close to me and then just kind of move the reservation to that car. A little bit of a hassle, but whatever. What are you going to do? Now, I couldn't get through the customer service. It took an hour and 35 minutes to get to a customer service person. Why? Why? It's on a Saturday. How many people have issues where it's going to allow me, where it takes an hour and a half to pick up a phone call? I don't understand, but whatever. I got through, right? The only thing that they were able to do was say sorry and give me a $25 credit. I was like, what? Yeah, that blows my mind. The $25 credit is so insignificant. You made me late, you know, made me late to, you know, to cut. Fuck the thing up. But the, how did you approach? I have to be critical because I, I think that I am, I'm a league leader in getting what I want from customer service people. It's an art form to me. It's something that I've over the years craft. I've learned from the best. You're welcome. I'm not saying that you were the best. I didn't learn from you. What I'm saying is I, I learned from 
Mm -hmm. I was a little disappointed when you told me that yeah. you only got 25 bucks. I mean, with the situation being what it was, you were stressed. You wanted to just get to Worcester. I understand that. Just wanted to get to the fucking show. Yeah. Yeah. And just I've been get, there. Yeah. Just get, I, want, I just, you know, I don't like things when this is what I don't appreciate and gets me a little upset when I prepare and do everything that I need to do mm -hmm. and then somebody else fucks it up, fucks it up and doesn't accommodate the fuck up the mm -hmm. right way mm -hmm. that's where i get pissed i don't care about mistakes i care about the solution the how we fix how it. we fix it yeah right and, and that's where i have a problem with with people when it comes to customer service i grew up in a customer so i always grew up, i always worked in customer service so i'm always looking at how to fix the solution so the person can leave happy mm -hmm. did you leave that solution happy nope okay i did it yeah i did it so Anyways, long story short, I was able to get a car. Um, actually, the person who actually was supposed to bring the car ended up bringing it a little later anyways. They checked and they said, oh, the car's there now. Like, nice little car, too. Nice little car. Um, it was a Kia, I think, if I wasn't. If yeah. I, yeah, it was a Kia, Kia Forte. Kia For Forte. Mm. Um, so I picked up Nikki Neighborhoods. We ended up going to the show. Um, nice ride. Nikki didn't fart. Nikki didn't do anything weird. Good, good. Would you say good travel etiquette? Yes, yes, you're yeah. you know you're pretty cool because you get you know when you roll with people and you know, comedians you got to find the right people that to like when you're on the road with yeah you know I just gotta I, you know it just it makes it easier. How is the level of talking? Do I talk too much? Not enough? Just right? Um, you talk. You know how you know you know the level of talking you are. You know, the best way I can describe how you are in a car is if it's like you it's like you were like I was married to you like you were my wife. Like, but you want a divorce, but you, but you, but you're already too in too deep and you're just going to ride it out. That's, that's, you got all that from the first hour. Yeah. Like so you're not familiar. happy with me, but you're, but you're, but you're content with me. That makes sense. Mm, that's an intro. That's interesting. How does that make you feel? Oh, I don't give a fuck either way. Okay. All right. Well, see, I'm, I'm always, I'm always curious. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah, you know, you're cool. We're talking about, you know, we're talking about the gig. We're talking about all that stuff. You're, you got a very, e you're, you're easy to be around. Yeah. And, um, so far, so far when I'm around, when you're around. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're easy to be around. And I like that. I, I don't like extra. I don't like people. Yeah. Who are nothing extra. about me is extra. I don't like extra. I don't like a lot of questions. I don't like, I don't like people just making things hard. Mm -hmm. I don't like, I like, I like people who are ready to go mm -hmm. when it needs to go. I, I need things to be like sure. smooth. And that's just my thing. And I'm going to be, and I'm going to be the same way if I'm going with someone else too. Sure. Right? I want to make it as comfortable as for them. I don't want to be um, a nuisance mm -hmm. for people. Mm -hmm. And you, and you, and you're, you weren't. So um, we get to the show. Um, the show was packed. Yeah. We, it was at Tiki bar place. How, you know, how many people you think? I want to say maybe it was like 50. Yeah, I would say 50. 50, 60? I told my wife 100, but 50 is more. Yeah. Oh, you told your wife 100? That's funny. That's hilarious. Um, I told, you know, Nikki got some stage time. Made sure Nikki got some stage time. Well, let's, let's, when we first walked in, yeah. the vibe was definitely a little, um, I feel as though no one saw us come in. No, the, no, the wait no staff one, was not interested. Nobody said hi. No one said hi. No, no one, one there was no introduction. Nothing. We just sat, we literally sat at the probably the bar for at least fifteen minutes. Oh, yes, unattended, unattended. Uh, just unaddressed. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> which is funny because we're the show. I'm the sh you know we're the show. <laughs> like so, it's just interesting. To I me. mean, yes, you 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 essentially because you did what thirty minutes. I, I, well, technically, I mean, supposedly I did twenty according to the <laughs> producer, but. Um, I was supposed to do 40, 45, um, but something happened. <laughs> can we talk about it? I'm fucking going to talk about oh, God, it. I don't want to get you in trouble. We can talk about what it, but who, like who, my nigga? the who vibe, I, the vibe. Who, who, trouble with who? Like <laughs> I'm the, sh I'm the, like no one. It's like, who am I going to get in trouble with? Like, um, the, the vibe was definitely, well, I'll let you tell it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you tell it, and then I'll do what I do best, which is add a little, add a little seasoning to it. I love the way you, the way you said that was cool because you were like, I, I, I let the brother take over. He's gonna, yeah, he's gonna <laughs> let the brother take over. Uh, it's interesting. The vibe was, I don't, I mean, the vibe was, uh, the people were great. People were fine. You know, the audience was great. 
really they were, wanted to laugh. They wanted to laugh. Um, but this is the thing. Sometimes um, I am, I've been doing this for a little while and I've been, I've been, I've been fortunate enough to partake in shows, whether it's been watching, whether it's been producing them, whether it's just been doing shows, what I've watched a lot of shows and I know how shows should operate and how they should operate. Okay. And sometimes, you know, when there's a certain pressure, um, I'm sorry, not even the pressure when things start to get, um, when you don't don't have order, when you don't have order on the show, we don't have, you know, if you don't like, for example, if you don't tell the comics how much time they're doing, you know, it just throws, it just throws the sequence of the timing of the show off. Okay. So, you know, I mean, long story short, man, I was supposed to do 40, 45 minutes. I was supposed to headline the show. Um, the, um, you went up into five minutes. Um, you did eight, technically eight, You're supposed to do five, whatever, you know, it is what it is, but you did well. Okay. Um, I was also told not to suck before going up. Yeah. There was some preliminary, there was some, uh, preliminary things that were that were said and asked repeatedly that i was getting fucking annoyed by um which jokes on her that's how i was raised so when she said just you know don't suck i was like all right yeah i mean it's fine i, mean, I won't that's Thank fine you. i mean it's just fine it's if it was if it was said in a funny way or if it said like in a way that was like you knew but you know you fucking you know you just <laughs> it's fucking wild it just was wild fucking it just was wild but you know it's it's whatever you know, I ain't tripping. No, it's good. I, I'm, I, I felt good. I, I felt really excited doing it, and the people were great. The crowd was really great. It was nice performing in front of people that were not waiting to go up and perform. Right. It was good. You did good. Did well. Um, you know, you had your moments, um, but you did well, um, especially for a person who hasn't um, kept getting a lot of stage time. So, um, so that, and that's one of the reasons why I want to bring you up in, uh, so you can, you know, get that, you know, build up that confidence and just kind of let's see and just get the feel for how um, live shows work, um, in these settings, because those are the type of shows that make you better. The shows that we did, the show that we did over the weekend. Yeah. We can go in a comedy club and try to, um, we can, you know, reach for the, the marquee, you know, we can, but when you where you really get good is these smaller shows and where people don't really know you're doing them but you're just grinding and out grinding and out and keep doing these shows so um and then the second comedian who was supposed to be the feature comedian or was a feature comedian ended up doing 35 to almost close to 40 minutes and at that point i was like well all right i'm not doing 40 40 45 minutes because that's not a headline spot now i'm just doing just time so um yeah, so I cut it so where people can be fine with an hour and a half show, and they left fine. They left happy. So that's what it is. Hey, but hey, food for thought, if you're producing the show, um, know the times and make sure you, you, you let the comedians know, that, you know the times and pay attention to that. That wasn't even a shot. That was more of like a... Um, it hesitated there for a second. I think it deserves a... That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. There's no hostility. But it, it was just a funny way. Because you know how sometimes when wires are crossed or like people are, you can tell people are stressed. Everyone's kind of, yeah. I got a stressed out vibe from everyone in there. Yeah. It was just, it was like a stressed out type of vibe and it was starting to like come on to my energy. And I'm like, yo, don't fuck my energy up. That's the one thing I noticed about you on this trip is that, um, you know, there are some people that are go introvert when there's stress presented or conflict presented to them, they go introvert. You go very extrovert, I feel like, in that sense. What do you mean? Like, if someone brings stress to you, you're just like, no, 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 no. Out. D- go somewhere the fuck else with that shit. Yeah, that's how I am. I was like, all right. Yeah. I I, I, I'm, a, I'm unapologetic about that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's great. And that's it. You know, I'm not <laughs> going to allow anyone to, really to great. bring in, you know, that shit around me. You know, so. I love it. Because um, I just feel like you need to set those you have to set those boundaries really up front of what you accept from people and what you don't. Now, a lot of people have different ways of expressing that. Some people are a little bit less modest. Some people are more blunt or aloof. Um, I like to be in the middle, you know, I like to fill it out, but I only do that to people who I feel need to hear it, who deserve it. If it's someone that I don't know, I I'm a little, you know, I just kind of, 
I, I, I just kind of disappear. You know, I walk away or whatever. But if you know me and you know exactly like how I am and what the things that I don't accept or allow and you continue to do it, then I have a fucking problem. Yeah. Then yeah. I have a problem because now you're neglecting, you know, now you're, you're just pretty much just doing what you want to do and not taking in consideration, you know, the other people. Yeah. You show people how you want to be treated. That's it. And I think that's great. I think people, I think people, more people should do that. But you did well. You crushed it. I mean, it was a great crowd. Um, I, did, I think I did well. I yeah. did well. Yeah, I did okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you had, you had bits where it was like, you know, everyone for, for 30 minutes. I mean, there's, there's going to be lulls, but like mm -hmm. the highs will, the, you had some, you had some moments where it was just like, oh, cl clapping. When, oh. You, when there's a, pl when there's applause breaks. Yeah. It's like, okay, that's, that's new. Yeah. That feels good. Yeah. Those feels good. It was a good rhythm. I was in a pocket and they just needed to be shaken up a little bit, you know, after getting a uh, past pastor speech by, you know, uh. <laughs> he needs some milk. <laughs> it was all good, man. Shout out to uh, all the comedians that are on the show. It was a good time. It was all love. We left and we went home safe. <laughs> That's my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> we left we home safe. We, we didn't just leave either. We 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 did one of my favorite things to do on a road trip. We pit stopped. We did. We pit stopped. We got a little Mickey D's. I got some beef jerky. We I switch drivers. You got to be yeah. You got a beef jerky. I was surprised. If, I, I didn't know you was a beef jerky gas station guy. I know. I don't really come across as one, but it's just so good. I can't ever. Well, pass the it brand. Up. The brand was. You it know, was aggressive. Was definitely you. It was definitely, Matador. I mean, it was Matador. It was very chic. That's. I feel like that's the top of the line beef jerky up there. They do keep it on like the top shelf. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You're a bougie jerky bitch. Yeah. Um, and I just had some of that, you know, that devil's lettuce earlier, and I ended up ordering pretty much everything at McDonald's. I actually made <laughs> it Nikki drive. So good. Yeah, I made Nikki drive so I could eat the McDonald's the last twenty minutes of the ride. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I did, and it was great. Um, God, I love fast food sometimes. It's great. It's so good. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, we, went, we came back to Boston pretty early, and uh, that was our Saturday. So me and Nikki did a show together, and it ended up, ended up pretty good. So hopefully we get to do some more together, and uh, which I'm sure we will. And so that was fun. What else has been going on with you, Nikki? What was the rest of your weekend like? Not much. I had some family stuff on Sunday um, and some stuff with my wife on Sunday that I had to do. And uh, I just had a lot of fun at that show. Yeah. I just had, I had a moment at that show where I was just like, you know, comedy, you said to me, you said this to me a while back where you were just like, comedy will sometimes take you in a place where you're like constantly judging yourself and you're like, oh man, I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's, I don't know what's going to happen. And then you have a moment like Saturday. Now to you, this, that was probably just your regular bar show, you know, just kind of mm -hmm. go and do whatever. But to me, I was just like, oh, Okay. There's a whole nother level. It's like mo it's like playing the video game and getting to the next level. There's a lot more levels. There's so many levels. But just even getting to the next level was like, oh, okay. Yeah. This is how you sustain for for five minutes, not two minutes. Lull for thirty. Then you get an extra. Th you get a good. Th you know, like that's kind of what the vi that's how my set was. Was more or less like, okay, I had them for a minute up front. Mm -hmm. decent and yeah. then lull for 30 so just kind of getting the cadence and all that stuff that that consumed most of my weekend i'll be honest yeah which yeah. was which was uh it doesn't say a lot for what i do on the weekends but <laughs> well it was good that you um in my opinion in that position uh, you have to you have to put yourself in that position you're gonna have, you have to force yourself to be in those yep um you have to and, be prepared and yeah and you know being prepared is always good Coming from a person who's never prepared, I mean, that's whatever, but <laughs> um, you do the best you can and you just take risks, you know, and like you said, there's levels to it. Um, whether you're there, whether you're visiting, as long as you're seeing it. Yeah. Um, and then so you can think back on what you need to do. And to be quite honest with you, just to even feel the pressure of if this is the thing that you can handle. Yeah. Right? A lot of people think this is this is easy going up and just talking for God, five, 10, 20, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, making people laugh. It's not, you know, and, no. and, and, you know, and 
it's also just dealing with the pressures of that, you know, and, 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 and being in your own head. And there's a lot of mental warfare that goes on as a comedian when you're trying to get better and you're trying to get stage time and you're trying to just do this thing that you that you love. But I've also met a lot of comedians who've done this thing and they 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 grown to like like it a lot and love it. And then eventually over time, they grown to out love it because yeah. it, just, it comes to a point where they they, they can't handle it. Mm-hmm. So but that's why I always say in, in general, you should always go into things with not really high expectations. Yeah. You know, you go into things with a very, very like go into it loose, you know, cr- you know, and then whatever you need to do to find your balance to keep, you know, you, you're going to find your, you're going to find your prep. You're going you're gonna to find your thing. Yeah. I found myself being more present in the moment, not thinking about, you know, what's going to happen after the show? What are we doing that? How, how, what would happen today? It was very much just like, who's in this room? How are these other comedians doing? Like what, what, where, are, you know, like really being present in that sense. And I loved it. I wasn't thinking about like, yeah, how many years is it going to take until I'm ho- like, that's it. Yeah. I'm on, it, it, it's not Good. even that point. You're just like focusing on that moment. So that, that, moment. that was really kind of a cool moment for me, but yeah. um, being present is very important. Yeah. <sighs> Man, it was a good weekend. I actually, I actually got rid of my old podcast. I kind of just ended the whole thing. You got rid of your podcast? Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about your podcast then. <laughs> We're friends now. Yeah. We're friends now with something I started with Ani and Irish of Too Much Content, uh, mm-hmm. the studio that you use when you go on go down to New York. Yep. G- love working with them. Shout out to them. Um, but it was just one of those things where I ju- that was my first podcast I started. It was like you know. I kind of just didn't enjoy doing it anymore. Yeah. I kind of talked myself into doing it. So like, yeah. I was like, you know, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing we're friends now. Well, well, I have the episodes, like maybe we'll put them up somewhere if, if you know, whatever, but I'm just going to focus on doing stand up and like my Nikki neighborhood stuff and maybe a new podcast, you know, yeah. just, it's a little bit easier to. Hey, listen, you c- trust your instincts. Yeah. Trust your instincts. When I get done with something, <laughs> I, I'm like, it's one of those things where I'm like, no, maybe we'll, you know, keep the page up and no, right. it's gone. Yeah. No, just get <laughs> I'm on it out. Yeah. It's like clothes, like extra clothes or shit that you have around your apartment. It's like, get out. See ya. Bye. Yeah. No, you just listen. Um, nothing wrong with like resetting, you know, stopping something and trusting your instincts and who knows you can revisit that later on you can start a new podcast do you you know this is the thing about i feel like there's a you know people just get too wound up and fit in like the idea of like quitting or failing something or they think like it, instead of just saying to yourself hey i'm just done with this it's not making me feel good it's not bringing it's not making me maybe maybe felt good previously but now it's not just saying to yourself, all right, I'm done. I'm leaving this yeah. thing. Whether it is a relationship situation, whether it's a professional career situation at a job, whether it's a friendship with somebody, you know, whether it's, you know, comedy, anything that like all of a sudden makes you feel you not being present anymore in yeah. that situation. I feel like it's very important to cut those ties and to just go back and like, you know, either go back later on if you feel it's worth it or just completely move on from it. Where if you just get yourself, if you just tie yourself into this, if you allow yourself to, you know, it to, if you allow yourself to continue with something that you're not happy with, it just makes you more, more unhappy, resentful. resentful. Yeah. I sort of resenting doing that. Yeah. Shit. Bitter, whatever, whatever, you know, feeling that you get from it not good i should say I, i'm one of my buddies reach out and he's like did you do you need to be put back on antidepressants like what the fuck he's like i just listened to the last episode he's like you just don't sound i'm like okay yeah. that's all i need is that last can i be honest with you yeah. um i can't sh- i can't share the same thing because i haven't listened to any of your episodes no but i don't expect that's the thing i'm too. sure like you know if your friend told you that, that means he was listening. Yeah. And then he probably caught on to a vibe or a tone or something that made him feel like. So if your listeners feel, this is the thing about comedy too. If you're, if you're, if you're a comic, if you come into on stage 
feeling a certain way, yep. the audience is going to feel that as well. Yeah. So if if pe- pe- it's easy to read, you know, it's very easy to read. Yeah, we got got to that point. I have some I have something else that I'm cooking up, and like I'm I'm excited about it. Um, but I think yeah, I think for that it's just like you don't want to linger in things you for too linger. long. You don't want to let it yeah. take away from you. And I'm just um, no way. Yeah, I'm in a good pocket with uh, comedy and Cleared your mind doing shit and working and not <laughs> thinking I deserve anything. Just fucking getting well, up. Well, as long as you're doing something, you know, as long as you're yeah. doing something, you know, this podcast that we're doing, you know, you, you're busy with that. So at least that gives you something to, like every week to kind of like get yeah. at least be in the game with, you know, yeah. whether it's it's just, yeah, teaching how to edit or listen. You know, just it's just in the game. You, you got to stay in the game. Just got to stay in the game. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big thing. You just gotta stay in the game. So that's I don't like lulls. Like, if you need to take a re, if you need to take a break, that's different. Yeah, for personal matters or whatever. I'm all about, I'm all about breaks. Oh, I'm all about breaks. <laughs> Ooh, I got some stories about breaks, man. Oh yeah, I got let go of a job because I took a break too long. <laughs> yep, I allegedly got fired from uh, one of my previous jobs for sleeping on the job. Now listen, I know. <laughs> I feel like I need to tell the story again, but yeah. should I just read the dis- disciplinary report instead? Do you have it? I do. Pull it up. I kind of want to order this pizza first. Do that. I'll tell a story when I took a break. Listen, you tell a story. I'm going to order a pizza from Big Daddy's. Pizza. Oh, good God. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's fine. Okay. You're doing it on your phone, right? You're not going there. I'm just going to call it. Uh, I could do eight. If you leave me alone for eight minutes, at around the six minute, I start to. I've seen your eight. You can only get no, to. I can do. F- I can do three. Yeah. I'll give you three good minutes. Okay. Um. <laughs> what, what the fuck were we talking about? You're oh, talking about a, a break. A story. A break. A story. A break. Story. No, I used to work at Enterprise Rent a Car. The fucking craziest thing was I worked at Enterprise Rent a Car when I was in college, cleaning cars. I would ride my bike from you know Cambridge to Somerville, uh, to to clean cars in you know in the winter it was it was hell so you go there just clean cars was easy it was good money and then over break they were like yeah you know let us know what your hours are going to be over break and i thought let us know what your hours are going to be meant like you don't have to show up anymore until you let us know what your hours are going to be so i just took a break i just went on vacation you know for a month and uh, I checked my email like a month after and they were just like, so are you going to, are you coming back? Or like, what's the deal? Like, we're probably, we're going to have to terminate you. And I was like, yeah, no, I think I'm, I think I'm good. That story is boring. Two. I mean, your story was great, man. This. Uh, oh, hang up. We'll run. We run it through here. Thank you for calling McDonald's pickup delivery. Oh, this is gonna be a pickup. Oh. Yeah. Sure. Chase. Can I have a uh, a pepperoni pizza, please? Um, I guess a medium sized pepperoni pizza. Um, they come small, large. Well, hmm, well, all right. Let's see. Let me do a large. I'm feeling lucky. It's my birthday week. Oh, okay. Happy birthday. Thank you. Can you throw some free breadsticks? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, if you could possibly throw some free breadsticks, that would be great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, can I pick it up? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just doing a podcast right now, but uh, can I pick it up at like, you know, a little. What time do you guys close? Like, is there a storage fee? Because I'm not sure how long I'll be. No, we, we close at 8. Oh, you close at 8. Okay, so I got to pick it up very soon. Okay, I'll be there. All right, so you want me to put the large pepperoni? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you're all set. All right, I'll be there at um, 7.50. Thank you. Bye. 
Yeah, that was more entertaining than my story. For sure. I mean, I mean, it was. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um. Well, yeah. Well, good. Yeah, we're already forty minutes. So we'll be good. We'll be. We'll be done. Yeah. We'll be back just in time for me to edit out your name. <laughs> 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 Oh man, now nah, I gotta get a pizza, man. It's gonna be one of those nights. I'm happy. It's my birthday week, man. A pepperoni? Pepperoni. Okay. A little peppy. Now, are these, are these like the, the little pepperoni, or do they go with like the, the. What's the style of pizza there? Style of pizza? Oh, um, a good one? Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah, I don't know. It's a good pizza. I mean, you don't even have your mic on. I don't, I don't know. Like, couldn't even hear you. I was just doing the producer thing where they kind of just shout from the back. Oh, my bad player. Given the, given the vibe, given the effect. My bad player. No, it's pepperoni pizza. Big Daddy's Pizza, Brighton, Massachusetts, guys. Great pizza if you're in the Boston area. The they have a lot of good stuff. Ooh, they have the steak chipotle pizza. Oh, with the with the sauce, with the, with the mayo sauce. Oh, crack. Crack. I can't even tell you how I order my pizza. I feel like you're going to kick me out. I only do cheese. I only do cheese, or if it's a good if it's a good pan pizza, I'll do a pepperoni, Sicilian style. I got, I, got, I got to think that I got to think this through. I got to think this podcast through. Everyone's after that fucking story about the break that I took at Enterprise. People are going to be rethinking yeah. having me on this podcast. <laughs> Podcast is great, Chase. Yeah, uh, except for the fucking long-winded story that Nick told about his Enterprise Rent a Car yeah. spring break. Yeah, fuck it. I didn't know what to do. It was like, it was like, ugh. I mean, it was like, ugh. I can't believe this prejudice against a Jew broad. Prejudice against Italians. <laughs> it's just ugh. That story. That, that story. I didn't know. Like, I don't even know. If, listen, with that story, just just put it in your pocket and keep it. And don't even let anyone know about that story. That's an ADD story. Like, that didn't need to be said. That's the story that you tell yourself in the mirror after you, while you're brushing <laughs> the teeth by yourself when no one's around so you could work it through. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> um, listen, we all got stories. But yeah, I mean, I mean, there was a time where I, you know, my boss found me at around 4.30 in the morning. I was sleeping. The thing is, like, I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't technically sleeping because I saw him come. Like, I saw him not come, not come like come like that, but like come towards me. Like he, so I, I was awake enough. Woken up. Was it woke enough? Or awake enough. I was awake enough. I was awake enough. Is that a vocab? I was. I was conscious enough. I was conscious enough. All right. Fuck. I was conscious enough for him to walk towards me. So I wasn't sleeping, but. I was not at my post and um, I did, you know, got a cot and I laid out and I had my shoes off and my belt off and it did look like I was there for a long time and they let me go. Well, I guess that story wasn't as good as the other one either. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it was a oh man, you know. We're gonna get it. I this week is I'm I'm trying to go into this week with a really really just being very up uplifting and and very um just trying to do a whole week of just being like a very just energetic you know energy. I have some coworkers man they're just like Debbie Downers man I think we talked about this I'm just like yeah yeah the Debbie Downer stuff I'm just you know I I'm, I want to be i this is the thing with me this is why i have kind of like an extrovert introvert type i have an extrovert introvert type of energy but my extrovert energy man it just it helps me get through the day like you know i have to psych myself up because it's other people's bullshit i have to deal with so i have to like be excited about like as soon as i punch in to go to work i'm already thinking about the things i'm doing way better after work <laughs> Like so I want to get through the eight hours as fast as I can, as happy as I can, so I can so it can lead into the stuff that makes me more happy after. Yeah. So um yeah, so guys, uh, any ladies out there, uh my phone number I just I just released it so you can call me anytime. Um there was one thing I wanted to talk to you too. It was um I think did you see you tell me about the other Kanye like episodes? Right, the documentary. You saw the rest of the documentary 
on Netflix. The yeah, Kanye I watched one. I watched the full Kanye doc, um, and I thought it was o- I thought overall. It was good. Overall, what did you think about the whole project itself of the of the documentary? For artistically, I thought it was really well done. Um, I think it's a fascinating subject. I think Kanye is very misunderstood. Um, I think he definitely ha- has a mental illness. I think he's bipolar, um, which is not the end of the world. That doesn't necessarily put you in a box, but. I think towards the end, you start you started to see like, hey, at a certain point, this person actually was you know mm-hmm. really upset about his mom dying. You realize that people can get triggered, at, you know, by certain things, by certain life events. Yeah, anyone mm-hmm. from you know whomever all the way to to Kanye West, like one of the biggest you know superstars in the world. But I think the two things that stood out to me the most is this man is a musical genius. I mean, and the, you know this. People say it, right? No, but he is. He's, but then you look at it and you go, "Oh my god, he is." Um, and the second thing was was just like he definitely lost his way, and then he kind of reconnected with his friends from Chicago, who's the who's the filmmaker, and, and has all this amazing footage. But the end was kind of sad because he was really spiraling, and like the guy who was filming it, his best friend was like, "I I have to turn the camera off mm-hmm. because I didn't feel right." videotaping him having these episodes uh yeah. it just didn't feel right so you kind of leave with the taste in your mouth of like man i hope he figures it out because the beginning the first two episodes the first two yeah. things of this are you're like <sighs> this is another thing i want to talk about and real quickly um and that is that i think a lot of people in this i feel like a lot of people share this particular experience maybe not so much directly but indirectly where they have someone they really really care about in their life and they see them going down a rabbit hole that's not good for them Mm -hmm. and when is the time and when is it acceptable for the person to tell them about themselves and to get them help and i've i've you know i feel like that's a big thing when it comes to like friendships in friendships specifically or relationships where like when you see someone you care about you know when and when should you tell them you know what should you tell them how should you tell them that they're really going down a rabbit hole and i've always been interested in that Mm -hmm. and i've people react very differently for something you know when they're getting um i guess taught a lesson or when they're getting that medicine from their friend that they really care about saying hey man you're you're or hey girl you're you gotta fucking really you, you, you're you know you gotta take a step back here you know what's going mm-hmm. on you know i i've been in those situations with friends i've had like and <laughs> it's interesting because a lot of friends that i've told from my perspective that i thought you know they were exhibiting bad behaviors a lot of them didn't listen a lot of them didn't listen to me. They either, you know, they either got combative, they were defensive, they either, or they just didn't listen. They just didn't listen. And I don't know if this is an example of that with Kanye. I don't know if he had a lot of people in his, you know, and his, it's hard. I mean, especially when you're a billionaire or a millionaire, you know, you have a lot of yes people around you. They're mm-hmm. not, you know, they want to make money off you. So they're not going to probably give you the best advice for your well being. They just want to make money off you. Well, they say in the in the in the documentary, the guy who's, who's his best friend was like, and after the first year that he blew up, so the year that he blew up, we'll say is like you know early two thousands. We'll say like I think it was two thousand and like two or three. That his first album came out, and then yeah. he really started to, and he blew up after that. Oh, yeah, it, was it was like real crazy. Oh, yeah. They were like, oh, there's not enough room on his tour, but like, he started not being able to get in contact with him. Um, they were at a thing. Kanye had to go here, so instead of following him, he had to go home. Right. So, and, it, and it's kind of cool because the guy talks about his wife, the 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 person that shot this Kanye's friend, talks about how his life changed yeah. throughout all of this. Um, but that was at that point he said, and then when Kanye's mom died, that was at that point where he was like, right. we don't know whether you know what direction he's going in and what's happening. And it was like, I think he said it was like. I don't know if it was 10 years that they didn't speak, but it was like a good, it was like five or six years they didn't speak because it was just not even anything specific. It was just like getting big, but no, I I don't know. I've dealt with that personally where you have friends or family that are suffering maybe with a mental illness or maybe just having a hard time. Everyone's different. It's really hard. I think you just have to be available for people. 
I think you have to be available for people. And I think depending on who the person is, your expectations of what they should be doing and how they should be living, it's totally different than what they're probably going through. So you have to kind of remove your feelings. Like if you know someone and you're like, man, this person has so much potential to be doing something good. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to remove that and be like, what does this person need right now? Because they're in the middle of some shit right now that they have to get through. And how do I... All right. just help with that it's hard it's not an easy it's thing it's not to an do. easy thing it's not an easy thing um i just i think the other part of the equation is that that individual may not know that they may not need that thing that's the thing but you see it that they do so that's always been um something that i've had to work with and try to you know just deal with that you know because it's tough but you know if you, what i'm saying is i guess in conclusion is that if you do have someone that or anyone that you feel like is exhibiting certain behaviors that is that's uh, detrimental to themselves don't be afraid to speak up because i think if you do hold it back then it just it grows you know just just be honest as long as you're honest hey and if they get mad hey then so be it you know but you can't, I believe you just can't let, you can't let people who you care for. I'm not saying let, like in terms of like you're, you're allowing them. What I'm saying is without you at least stating your, your opinion about what's going on, at least you got to voice that, you know, you can't make someone do what they want to do. You can't make somebody live a life of that. You think it is what I'm saying is, but you can definitely say exactly what you think is going on or whatever behaviors that they're exhibiting that you feel like it's not adequate. Um, for your relationship to go forward in a positive way so um fuck Woo, that was good Chase. man <sighs> i don't know if i can come at that i think that, that i mean this episode looks like it's gonna be we just dropped two fucking d dumpers of a story and came back with some real shit that was good and i ordered a pizza yeah, and you were, yeah, and maybe Fremont's Rella sticks. We'll see if she comes through with that. She sounded like she was like, all right, yeah, it's your birthday, we'll do it. See how easy that was? See customer service there? Well, she does, she's like, yeah, whatever, that's fine. Mozzarella sticks, let's make someone happy. You're absolutely right. Right. In that moment, she was like, okay. There was no hesitation. You know, you had a personality, you were, you were upfront, transparent. Yep. Well, I'm happy for you. Well, I just understand why things, why, why, why people have a hard time, you know, at these at these places. If you if you're just like that, I don't know, people. I, I mean, no, I'm not going to run for president. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Just not going to do it. But I will accept your go uh, my GoFundMe uh, donations <laughs> this week. So. Um, I mean, as far as that, man, I want to do, uh, a very, very quick episode. I know usually we go about hour, hour 15. Um, there will be another episode this week, uh, another guest episode, uh, that I hope you guys will tune in and listen. Um, that will come out this Thursday. Um, I interviewed, um, a, one of my old time friends. Um, he's a, re he's like a local, local legend here in Boston. One of the one of the best DJs and still the best DJs around um, that I know. Uh, his name is DJ Elabash. Uh, please tune into that episode. I will be coming out this Thursday. This episode will be, I mean, regularly scheduled program. So thank you very much for tuning in. Please, please guys subscribe, rate and share the podcast. Um, it's appreciated. Nikki, what do you have, man? Please plug your stuff. No more things to be plugged yet. Right, we're in, we're no cooking up. That's we're right. cooking up. Yeah, uh, Nikki right. Neighborhoods has some things cooking up, but I am uh, just working, writing, going to mics, and um, just tagging along with you wherever I'm. Wherever I'm welcome. You got a good energy. I think that show gave you some good uh, energy, man. Yeah, it's, it's coming off me. Came off. Yeah. Yeah, it came off. No pun intended. Who knew Worcester could lift the spirits of someone that much? Blue collar people always do. Love it. Blue collar people always, will always will. I'm, I'm just, you just the, the, the streets will always put you in back in place. I'm, t you know, that's just how it goes. Like, so, hey, <laughs> let's go get it. 
you know, and make sure you guys go get it too. All right. And again, I appreciate you guys for listening. Follow me at Chase Abel, Chase Abel on Instagram, C H A S C A B E L. Um, I'm going to be releasing a merch, guys. I'm going to release some merch. And there's going to be more information about that. Um, it's going to be, it's a very cool um, thing that I want to start doing. Um, it's, uh, I don't want to say too much, but uh, maybe by next episode, maybe a couple of weeks, I'm going to um, give you guys more information. But I'm going to be releasing a merch, um, some merch. I don't know if it's going to be an online store, whatever the case may be, but uh, we got some graphics going on. And now I'm choosing the fabrics. I'm choosing the fabric. So maybe I'll, I'll include Nikki Neighborhoods in it to help me, you know, because he's, he's a fabric man. He's a fabric connoisseur. So, um, so we're just trying to stay busy. We're trying to keep going and that's all we can do. Hope you guys are doing the same thing. I'm sure you are. Uh, appreciate you guys again for listening. Um, cut to the chase podcast and we are out. Peace.